Hey, welcome back to part three of a video series where we talk about how we approached uh, the demonstration we brought to IMTS. If you didn't watch parts one and two, we're making a, a motor mount for our MicroArc 6. It's the uh, six inch fourth axis that we sell with the 1500MX. And we brought the 1500MX and the ZA6 robot to McCormick Place to IMTS this September, uh, making these things to show off the automation capabilities of the equipment. And you can see what we're doing is we need something that will grab this workpiece and put it into the OP1 vise. We also need something that will grab the finished part and remove it from the OP2 vise, right? Luckily, the geometry involved in grabbing this and grabbing this is similar enough that we can get by with the same end of arm tooling for that. And so, what you can see here is we've got a large two-finger parallel jaw pneumatic gripper. And what we've attached to it is just some tooling plates with some studs. And this was all 3D printed. The plates have staggered holes that allows us to move the fingers either closer together, farther apart, or we can spread the uh, width of the fingers. And all we had to do here was print these guys and set them so that the gripper range, the throw on this gripper, matched both the raw workpiece for picking it up and matched the finished workpiece for picking it up. So grabbing this guy and grabbing this guy when we're done was pretty easy. Flipping this over was a little bit more challenging. And um, the problem here is that when you grab it and you flip it over, as you're flipping it, if you don't grab it correctly, it tends to sag under gravity, right? So we actually ran into this problem when we were making these six inch soft draws. We did this demonstration at Automate this year, and it was a real similar, actually a harder part to flip. This was OP1, and we needed to flip it over to OP2. And you can see if you only grab it here, whoa, flipping it over for OP2, it, it tends to sag. And uh, Jason solved this problem very elegantly with a pair of um, finger extensions that go on the two-finger pneumatic gripper. And you can see quite clearly how these things would key into the two features on that jaw. So when it came time to develop a solution for this, were you thinking of, were you thinking of the automate solution at the same time? I mean, yeah, it was the, we, we have a process that works. So let's do it the quickest, simplest right. way possible, sure. right? So just adapt what we already have done and have proven to be successful with. So, and in this case, you had a couple features to work with. You've got this circular pocket and you've got this uh, rectangular pocket here. Yeah. But the features on these are so much larger, like with the vice jaw, we were able to fit it in between the pneumatic jaws real easily. Uh, with this, if we had a, circular feature to locate that entire bore, it would be too large to fit in between the vice jaws. So we had to go a different route. We couldn't just use that entire bore. So it looks like here on the actual fingers that we went with, you took kind of that circular shape, you put a nice chamfer or an angled, an incline there, yep. which kind of gets it locked into position as it clamps. Yep. And then exactly. uh, I see that you used one of these rubber feet that you like a lot. What's the deal with the rubber <laughs> foot? It gives you that little bit of friction and they're also threaded so you can adjust it. You can see this isn't made it up tight. So that allows us to kind of put a little bit of preload or tension into the system to give it a little bit of extra grip and to help it locate. Yeah, so this is what Jason's talking about here. These little guys, they thread in. And so if you want this sticking further out, you just unscrew it. If you want it sticking further in, you screw it in. And we did that here on this as well, right? And they're just an off-the-shelf available bumper. So it's just a real simple component and low cost to work with. Uh, when you developed the 3D models for this, was there, did you bring this thing into the assembly and go right off I just drew or? right over the top, yeah. So I just created a new component right inside of Fusion and just drew right over the top of the part. So then you can just extract out all the features and locations of everything. And in terms of the actual mounting to the uh, parallel jaw gripper, that was basically the design that you had previously Yep, I just modified this design to work with the new, with the new part. So I just took all the existing geometry. And so once it's grabbed, it's really quite solid in there. I mean, I can squish it around a little bit, but it's clearly not going to move just under gravity there. You want to open it up again, Jason? And now 
We 3D printed these just to make sure it was going to work before we ended up cutting them out of aluminum. But with the, yeah, it worked. <laughs> so we kept with it with the resins and our, not resins, I'm sorry, but all the different filaments and stuff that are available now, you can get a really high quality, really strong 3D print. So, um, you know, we just, we just made them straight off the 3D printer and printed the threads and everything and it just, it worked really well. We've run hundreds of these parts now and there's pretty much no wear on this whatsoever. We ran many hundreds of parts on these guys and obviously there's no wear on the aluminum. Perhaps the only wear you see is a little bit of, little bit of wear on the pads. Yeah. So I would say unless you're going into the tens of thousands of parts, 3D printed should be okay. Well, At least can, in this with some of the new filaments too, yeah. I think though you'll get I think you'd get really good surprising amount of life out of even if you use a higher quality filaments with like a carbon fill or a, any sort of a glass fill resin, or a, I keep calling them resins, but they're filaments. So anyway, I think the moral of the story here is um, even when you have a real challenging part to flip like this or like this, if you apply just a little ingenuity and you use the features that are already there, uh, it's a real shortcut to get the job done. And if you have any questions or comments about what you saw in this video, uh, forums.tormach.com. We'd be happy to share more information if you have questions. Thank you so much for watching.